Please be seated. I am Shai Lifshitz from uh, Technion, and my colleague is Gil Markovic from Tel Aviv University. And we will be chairing uh, this uh, afternoon session of nanomaterials and nanotechnologies too. And uh, our first keynote lecture will be given by Gil Rosenman from Tel Aviv University. And the title is Bio-Inspired Nanostructures, Deposition Technology, Physics, and Applications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to start as soon as I can. And I hope that the technique does work properly. Okay. I will speak in my lecture about bio-inspired nanostructural material. Deposition technology, physics, and applications. I would like to say from the very beginning that bio-inspired is a new generation of materials. And when we are speaking about bio-inspired, we mean that they are composed, or better to say self-assembly, from chemically synthesized biomolecules. That is why we are looking for absolutely new, novel physical properties at the interchange, biology, physics, and nanotechnology. This work is done in cooperation with Professor Udi Gazit from Molecular Biomicrology, Microbiology and Biotechnology Department. The first picture is related to developing in our lab a new method of peptide nanotubes, peptide nanostructures deposition using compatible microelectronics method of vapor deposition. You can see homogeneous coating with controllable thickness and density of nanotubes, which was deposited by this simple method. However, we, we, knew, we do know about nanotubes in an inorganic world, and almost everybody speaks here about carbon nanotubes. But I would like to say from the very beginning there is nothing common between carbon nanotubes and these peptide nanotubes, because Carbon nanotubes are one atomic layer thickness. And I will show you that peptide nanotubes are nanocrystalline ceramic. Observation of carbon nanotubes in 1991 by E. Jima and later by Reshev Tena with inorganic molybdenum selen nanotubes opened the avenue for this new development, I mean nanoscience and nanotechnology. And it was a great evolution for us. However, people from biology and who are involved in studies of living nature were not surprised at all. Because in biology, nanofibrils, nanowires, and such tubes are very well known for more than 100 years. We do know that self-assembly of peptides and Proteins, elementary building blocks in biology, compose human collagen. They are the main component of our cytoskeleton, our bones and elastic fibrils. Another interest is in a medicine. I will speak about, about my students a bit later. Sorry for, uh, for this mistake in, uh, in slides, but uh, in a medicine, it's a bit different. In the, med in the medicine, we do know that in a healthy state, we have soluble peptides and proteins in our, in our body. But when we are ill, this insoluble uh, protein, this, uh, peptides and, and, and proteins uh, becomes to be insoluble and they create nanofibrils. We do know today that about 20 or more diseases such as Alzheimer, Parkinson, carcinoma, diabetes 2, and others are related to self-assembly nanofibrils, biological nanotubes in our body. You can see a few examples related to these diseases 
And the first picture is Alzheimer filaments, nanotubes. Uh, nanotubes related and found amyloid fibrils in cerebral spinal fluid and, and in our pancreas. So far, we are speaking about natural biological nanotubes in a medicine, which are the reason for this, for this diseases. Okay? Studies of this amyloid fibril show that they are crystalline. Very small crystalline compose these nano, nanofibrils. And if you are looking for this structure, it reminds, and I will show you this a bit later, quantum well structure. In microelectronics and in optics, such a periodic structure composed of very thin crystalline plates is very well known, and their physical properties are, are studied well, and this is the basis for a huge industry, I mean quantum wave lasers, quantum dot lasers, etc. The first man-made nanotubes was announced by Gadiri in 1993. You can see here that self-assembly of two different uh, amino acids led to these nanotubes. But I would like to attract your attention to the very well-known paper published by Udi Gazit in Science in 203 about bio-inspired chemically sintered molecules. He found that that core motif of Alzheimer nanofibrils is simple, a very short or shortest peptide, diphenylalanine. And this diphenylalanine, if we take powder, chemically synthesized, and put it in the water, and after evaporation from water solution, we can get such a, such a remarkable picture with nanotubes horizontally oriented. However, if we do the same, I mean evaporation from organic solution, we can get this vertically oriented, high density peptide nanotubes. But it is spontaneous growth. It is method when we can get from solution and they possess remarkable properties which were studied before we started our field. Udi proposed us to develop new method, new technology. And I will show you later how, how it is done. But first of all, I would like to speak about motivation. We are speaking about motivation. What is the goal of our work? And we think that we will study these physical properties as an interchange, as I said, the biological biology physics. And the question is, could we come back to biology? Could we use this physics for studies of pure biological system? And the answer is yes. When speaking about these physics, physical properties, we will see that nothing was known. And I will show you only part of them. And we are involved in very intensive research during this last two and a half years. I mean structural, optical, conductive, electrochemical, and ferroelectric properties. I will show you that these peptide nanotubes are not alternative way for carbon nanotubes, to carbon nanotubes because they are different. They are absolutely different, as I said, nanocrystalline ceramics of biological origin, and the properties are different, okay? But anyway, I will show you what could be done with these nanotubes. As I said, we developed this uh, vapor deposition method, extremely simple, and we found this beautiful picture of nanotubes which are composed from different peptides. And you can see that we can deposit both aromatic and non-aromatic peptides, and all of them uh, give us this remarkable picture of vertically, vertically oriented tubes with high density. High density which may come to 10 to the power 9 units per centimeter square, and we are looking for much dense coatings and I will show you why. Anyway, 
we can find almost these huge nanotubes from alanine, but it is very interesting peptide, and I would like to say you that we are at the very beginning because number of peptides which nanotubes or composition which can be, can be studied is 20 to the power of 5 in biology, huge. So I think it is only the beginning of this way toward bio-inspired nanostructure. But this huge tube should possess very strong ferroelectric properties, I mean paroelectric and piezoelectric effect, and absolutely new applications. And we found some of them in diphenylalanin. Now let me start from basic physics, optical properties, and from the very beginning I would like to show you that we studied five sorts of this, of this uh, peptide nanostructure, uh, vapor deposited and obtained from a solution, also nanospheres, and this is, this is the starting point for showing you uh, properties I mean optical properties. If you are looking at these optical properties, this is absorption and photoluminescence for monomer. For monomer, diphenyl alanine aromatic dipeptide shows conventional, conventional absorption and uh, luminescence properties uh, as for any, any, molecular, any molecular spectrum. However, if we, when we studied it for peptide nanotubes, we found the spectrum dramatically changed. Uh, instead of this short, uh, instead of this peak-like uh, luminescence or absorption, we have got uh, optical absorption as a state-like. We have two steps, two steps, and these steps speaks for specific for specific electronic structure, for specific structure of these nanotubes compared to monopair. For example. For hydrogels, we have got, for small concentration, such a peak-like structure, which composed of several peaks. And finally, for high concentration, you can see, again, stape-like structure. What does it mean, stape-like structure? In uh, physics, we do know that bulk materials possess density of states, almost uh, quasi-homogeneous uh, energy spectrum. But if we come to quantum confinement, when we have very small crystalline structure, like quantum wells, when the size of the structure, dimension along Z, is about the Broglie wavelengths, the spectrum is absolutely different. You can see that instead of such quasi-homogeneous, we have state-like structure. An optical absorption coefficient is directly proportional to the density of electronic state. As a result, in quantum dots, you can see that we should get, in the case of quantum dots, and confinement of carriers of charge, I mean electrons and holes, inside very small ball, we will see big light structure. Let me come back and show you that, in this case, when you have step-like absorption, we may speak about in the case of this step that we have, we have quantum well structure, quantum well structure inside our peptide nanotubes. But please pay attention. If we change the concentration, okay, for small concentration, we have structure which remains and correspond to quantum dots. And finally, the small balls, nucleation of the second phase, when we have hydrogels, these na peptide nanotubes, we can get after this really from quantum dots phase transformation to quantum wells. By the way, if we are speaking about this, we can say that we have confinement of electrons as a whole, and so far we will see very strong exciton effects. Okay? If we are looking for uh, for this structure, I'm sorry, okay. We have done measure studies for two types of structures which are nanospheres, and we found that inside of these nanospheres, 
no, microsphere is better to say, we found also that they are composed from very small, very small quantum dots. However, in another type, f mock ff compared to this bock ff it is modification of diphenylalanine, we also have got these quantum well structures. All these type of structure uh, demonstrate a very strong luminescence. You can see here luminescence in UV and, and blue region in uh, these peptide nanotubes, and the same effect for hydrogels. And the disluminescence may be observed as a function when these small, small quantum dots goes to quantum wells. And we see that when we have hydrogel structure, I mean already nanotubes, nanofibrils inside the solution, we can see very narrow peak which shows us that we are on the right way and we may speak about quantum confined quantum well structures. Our calculation showed that we have exciton emission, exciton luminescence and excitonic effects. And that's what is really nice that uh, high energy of the excitons, it means that compared to basic semiconductors such as gallium arsenide, we can observe a very strong luminescence, and I will show you a bit later, in very strong luminescence at room temperature. That's important. Okay, let us compare our bio-inspired structure to semiconductors. What is, what is the common between them? The common between them is that they have confinement of electrons and holes. You can see this aluminum gallium nitrate, which is uh, squeezed in, in, uh, between two layers uh, with high energy gap, and as a result, we have strong confinement electrons in this and holes in this z, z, z direction. In the case of PNT, peptide nanotube sample assembly structure, we also have identical structure. But what is the difference? In microelectronics and in optics, we can create quantum well structure, but their size is about dozens of angstrom. We cannot get less. In the case of self-assembly, we can get it. We can get very narrow structures, and our calculation shows that it is about few angstrom, from 8 to 13, and the structure is very homogeneous. As a result, we have this beautiful picture of blue luminescence from this quantum well structure, and it is the basis for the further development toward optical devices. What about the symmetry of this nanocrystalline structure? Well, because it showed that uh, they have six-fold symmetry, and after this, Gorbit showed that this is symmetry is P61. This P61 hexagonal symmetry showed immediately us that this structure, and you can see here that what obtain, was obtained by my, my students, beautiful hexagon structure of these nanotubes, and this one you can see via small water droplet with a static Wettability properties for energy storage devices, and we found also such beautiful hexagon at the top of the tube. But when we are speaking about this structure and their composition, and looking for different properties, we can say that P61 is a direct way to observe piezoelectric properties, second harmonic generation, and probably ferroelectricity. Probably this is the way toward biological ferroelectricity. Let me show our first results, which were obtained with uh, my colleague from Portugal, and I can show you that we found in these peptide nanotubes very strong piezoelectric effect. Piezoelectric share coefficient is comparable or even higher than in lithium niobate, which is very well known, ferroelectric with pronounced piezoelectric properties. Okay? We found that this piezoelectric effect is highly anisotropic. And it is the way for development this bio-inspired material for bio piezoelectric devices in nanoscale. Another result is related to second harmonic generation. We uh, have a very good cooperation with Russian and uh, Netherlands scientists, and they show that these peptide nanostructures 
demonstrate pronounced resonance, two photon luminescence, two photon second harmonic generation, and two photon uh, optical effects like superluminescence. You can see these blue, blue peptide nanotubes, which, which is the second harmonic generation, which was pumped uh, when they, they were irradiated by very strong one gigawatt per centimeter user pulsed laser in the region of, of infrared. Okay, now a few words about application. The last, you can see that, and I told only a few properties, at this interchange which I said many times, biology, physics, these bi-inspired materials are absolutely new generation of materials, very promising. Very promising because we have beautiful optics toward light emitting devices. I will show you a bit later that we may detect amyloid diseases. Okay? And obviously to develop piezoelectric nanoactuators, transducers, and to use also in energy storage devices. A few examples. First of all, we do understand that we cannot do any device, any nanotechnology without, without nanofabrication. Nano you can see a few examples, arrays of these nanotubes, which are, were fabricated for, for both for piezoelectric devices, supercapacitors and others, which I am going to show you. And the next step, we are going to do it on flexible substrates. One very good example, a very interesting, detection of amyloid diseases. We do see in solution creation of this, of this peptide nanostructure. You can see here this curve, this is the optical absorption of hydrogels, uh, or, uh, sorry, for insulin and creation of nanotubes like in, in, in the case of diabetes. And you can see how strong is the luminescence with very narrow peak. Another example is PNT light emitting de device and this picture which I show you before, which is also the way for the further development of very efficient light devices. Okay, this example of supercapacitors, capacitors of with huge, huge capacitance, and we show Three that is, okay, that capacitance of carbon electrode, activated carbon, 16 microfarad per centimeter square, and it goes to 3,500 microfarad per centimeter square, for example, for peptide nanotubes. You can see that switching, I mean charge discharge of these capacitors is very fast for these peptide nanotubes. We don't understand it yet. We have some models, but I'm not sure that that is uh, right. But anyway, carbon nanotube uh, capacitance in, in the case of uh, carbon electrodes collapse at 20 millivolt per second, and we have 1,000 millivolt per second without any changes of cyclic vo vo um, uh, uh, voltagram. Uh, we do know how to change the ability of these nanotubes from highly hydrophilic to highly hydrophobic. This example shows that the, the surface may be strongly hydrophobic. That is why we can do uh, using micro patterning of this FF peptide, we can do microfluidic chips. I would like to say many thanks to my students to Nadav Amdursky, who is responsible and his PhD studies are, is devoted to optics and self-assembly, Peter Becker, supercapacitors, my student, uh, PhD student Ilya Tarczynski, surface modification, Maya Yevnin, she finished her uh, master science work on PPT, PNT with ability properties, and new, new guys who are involved in PNT nanotechnology devices. Uh, I greatly appreciate something happened with, with this file with, uh, to Professor Udi Gazid and to people from his lab. Uh, thank you for your attention and Chag Sameach. Thank you for your talk about this exciting uh, new material and we just have room for one question. I can't see anyone. Okay.
origin of ferroelectricity? First, all biology as told Pasteur about 150 years ago, oil biology exists due to asymmetric structure. If the structure is asymmetric, you already have piezoelectricity and you have second harmony. Okay? About ferroelectricity, in the case of ferroelectricity, you should find spontaneous polarization. And you, you, if you have it, you can speak about power electric devices. I would like to say you that recently two papers, probably already more, have been published on biological ferroelectricity, organic ferroelectricity in nature materials by Japanese. It is absolutely new field. Organic ferroelectricity, molecular motors which are based on electrically operated or switching of spontaneous polarization, and the structure are very close to biological molecules. I think that is the future development in ferroelectricity. If we find it, it will be great. But I am sure that it does exist. Okay, thank you again, Gil. And uh, we'll move to the next talk.